Hello and welcome back to this beginner series on machine learning and AI. In this video, we're going to be talking about prompts and prompt engineering. In this video, we're going to learn about what prompts and prompt engineering are. We're going to learn a little bit more about what the anatomy of a prompt is and what makes up a prompt. We're also going to go over some tips for improving your prompts and prompt engineering. And then last but not least, we're going to go through an example of how you can apply prompt engineering techniques to ChatGPT. First of all, what are prompts and prompt engineering? A prompt is a statement or question that is used to generate a response from a language model, such as ChatGPT. The prompt is the input that the model receives, and the response is the output generated by the model. Usually, these are known as completions. Now, prompt engineering, it's the process of creating and improving prompts. And the goal here is to make the prompts clear and unambiguous. And by doing so, the models are likely to generate more relevant and detailed responses. So what exactly makes up a prompt? Well, there's the question or the instruction, and this is what defines the behavior, or essentially is what helps generate the response. And then you also have the context, which is what provides additional relevant details to the prompt in order to generate the response. Now, we saw in the earlier video that chat history and message history are a really powerful way for providing context to chat GPT in a conversation. Other ways that you can also add context to a prompt are examples. And you can provide additional guidance here on how to format the response and be more specific about what it is that you're looking for the assistant or the model to generate for you. There's a few ways that you can go about improving prompts or performing prompt engineering. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you're clear and specific. Just like if you were talking to somebody, right? when you communicate or you're asking something of somebody, you want to make sure that it's clearly understood what it is that you're asking and what you're expecting. Once again, you want to include examples, also the chat history. You want to make sure that in the context of a conversation, the assistant has enough context to be able to produce relevant responses. Speaking of context, you want to make sure, again, the response itself is as relevant as possible. And at the end of the day, this is an experimental process. You want to make sure that you experiment and that you refine over and over again until you get to a point that you feel comfortable with the responses that are generated by this agent. Now, before we get into some code, I just want to remind you that any samples, you can find them over at aka.ms slash .net dash AI dash beginner. Let's take a look at some code. All right, so in this sample, we start off by installing the Azure OpenAI.NET SDK and other packages here, adding our using statements, getting our OpenAI service credentials through our environment variables, and then we configure our OpenAI client. Now, in this first sample, what we're going to do is we're just going to use a generic prompt to sort of kick off the agent, right? And you can see here that it's not very clear and it's very ambiguous as to what this assistant or what this sort of virtual agent is supposed to do. Essentially, the system prompt just consists of you're an AI assistant that helps people find information about your business. Okay. Um, again, not a lot of information there. And again, we configure our chat completion options, setting the temperature and a few other parameters here. We initialize our chat history, again, with that system message and adding that to our sort of messages or chat history and then beginning our chat. Now, the business itself, the one that I'm actually trying to generate this bot for, is sort of a outdoor sales or outdoor equipment company, right? But I didn't really specify that in the system prompt itself. So let's see what happens when I ask it. I like to get some pizza. OK, you can see that the system prompt start. And then I asked it, I'd like to get some pizza. And then you can see that the assistant just immediately replies, like, sure, would you like some recommendations for pizza places in your area? Would you like information about business specifically? Um, pizza in the area. OK, location, let's say Chicago. There you go. There's a whole bunch of suggestions for pizza places in Chicago. Um, now, if you were just looking at this uh, and taking it at face value, OK, it's actually generating responses based on what I'm asking it for. However, my business is actually an outdoor equipment sales company. So it has nothing to do with pizza. So although the answers may seem right, again, because I wasn't specific enough in that system prompt, right? you can see that it was very easy for me to sort of have this agent sort of go off the rails. And while fulfilling a task that I originally asked it to, that's not really what this agent was designed for. OK, right. So how can we make this better and really constrain sort of the scope of what this agent is supposed to do? 
That's where prompt engineering comes into practice. So in this case, we're going to modify our initial system prompt to provide more details. So you can see here that I'm telling it that it's an AI assistant. And this AI assistant basically just needs to classify intent and provide customers with contact information for the different departments in my outdoor equipment business, right? So if, if you were chatting with a chatbot or you were just looking for general information on who to contact about certain questions, that's what this agent is, is expected to do. Now, I've constrained it and told it only choose from the departments listed below. If it doesn't know where to direct the customer, just give them the customer service department, which the information is listed here. Again, you want the tone to be friendly and you want it to greet customers. And you can see that I'm providing, again, I'm providing that context of what are the different contact numbers for my business. And also I am providing some examples of what the responses should look like. So again, for example, if somebody asks, I'm looking for hiking boots and somebody wants to buy hiking boots, the appropriate place to direct them would be the sales department, right? And so I'm making that known. And that sort of edge case of, I wanna order a pizza, again, it's sort of responding that it's an outdoor equipment sales company and that they don't sell pizza. So again, we're, we're constraining on what this agent can do. So let's see how much different this performs. Again, we sort of initialize our chat history and then let's kick off this chat. So let's see, hi. Okay, hi there, how may I assist you today? I want to return some equipment I bought last week. Okay. And then it says, I can assist you with that. Please contact our returns department, which is what I would expect it to. Now let's say that I wanna say, I want to order a milkshake, okay. And then it sort of responds with, I'm sorry, we are an outdoor equipment business. We don't sell milkshakes or food products. Is there anything else I can help you with? Okay. So you can see that by being more specific, by providing examples, by providing additional context in our system prompt, we were able to guide this insistent and constrain it to do exactly what it is that we intend this agent to do. All right. So in this video, you learned what prompts and prompt engineering are, what the different parts of a prompt may look like. You also learned some tips for how you can improve your prompts to generate more relevant and accurate responses. And last but not least, we wrapped it off with uh, some samples of how you can apply prompt engineering techniques to ChatGPT. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.